Hello, Phil Tenalia here for the Matrix Goes to School, and we are here today to um, shooting a video about the power of noticing with the Matrix. So this is for all of you Matrix users out there, learners, educators, and we're going to talk a bit about how we use the Matrix to get noticing going in the classroom. So to start out with, getting some noticing going in the classroom or any other learning situation with the matrix is a pretty quick and powerful way to help students move toward cooperation and collaboration with you, the teacher, and uh, with each other. Noticing helps to get resistant or stuck learners working with you rather than, well, just fill in the blank with whatever is uh, your five cents experience of them. So uh, the matrix, as we know, starts with an invitation. Since invitations feel better and friendlier than commands, so by asking students if you can show them your point of view, you encourage them to make a pro-social choice and the act of paying attention to someone else's perspective. So to start out with, we help learners, learners develop a workable perspective you have to get the matrix out in front of them. So we have our matrix out in front of us here. I've already drawn one up for us here. And uh, they will need to see this point of view so that you can show them the point of view you're working from. So if you don't have it up, you need to get it up. So once you have it up, you can then have them sort their experiences onto the matrix. So for example, they can start with sorting who is important to them down here and that's usually family friends etc can also ask them what is important to them and they might say uh, fun some of them might say uh, their iPhone is important to them some of them, if they're in school, they may even say that education is important to them. Most of them do. And then uh, we'll slide over here and we'll ask them how it feels when they're doing all this good stuff. And usually they'll give you some version of it feels good. So I'll write that down. Then we slide over here. We ask them next what kind of stuff shows up on the inside that gets in the way of moving toward, I'm going to use this word toward here, what gets in the way of moving toward the important stuff. And typically, answers will show up like uh, fear, anger, maybe frustration, and our good old friend, boredom, will often make an appearance on the board. So we jot all that down, and then we kind of slide up here, and we ask them what kind of things they do to try to get away from this stuff, right? So fear shows up down here inside of them, and make some kind of a move, like they might leave, or they might cry. Uh, if anger shows up, they may yell to try to get away from their anger. Frustration shows up, they may decide that they want to quit, so they might be doing something like reading, and they might stop doing it. If boredom shows up, very often what they'll say is they might put their head down. So these are behaviors they do to move away. And then finally over here, we ask them about some of the things they want to be able to do to keep moving toward who's and what's important to them. Like uh, talk to somebody, uh, listen to a friend, a parent, a teacher, um, play a game. If they're in school, they might notice that they would come to class and then when they get in class they might say that it's a good idea to do work and or pay attention all that good stuff so once we get all that going we uh, then say to them something like and we can also use this matrix to help us stay on track or figure things out when you run into problems or difficulties so when the inevitable difficulties show up and things start getting bumpy, you can get the matrix out or you can put it up on the board and say something like, hey, I'm noticing that something seems to be getting in the way of us working together right now. 
Okay, if we use the matrix to figure out, we can do next. And then you can go ahead and use the matrix to help them notice what they're doing. Over here, or over here, how it feels, either toward, or how it feels when you're doing the away stuff, and what can be done to keep going or get back on track. So, then you continue by using the matrix throughout the day to reward toward moves. That is, notice what's working, how it feels, why you move toward what's important, and also to be over here noticing the away moves so they can figure out what they want to do next or what they can do next. Now, a little explaining for you. There's no need to explain any of this to the student, and here's why. If you look at the me in the middle of the matrix, you will see the word noticing. From the day we showed up on the planet, each me has been noticing all kinds of things. Of course, all noticing starts out with our five senses up here. Right, so now I go up here, and we have five of them, so there's five inputs. And seeing, hearing, touching, tasting, and smelling our way through life with our senses, they are our navigational system. The me never stops noticing. The other part of the navigational system is the stuff that shows up inside of us, which is down here. The me notices all of the thoughts, feelings, images, sensations, in whatever situation we are in. Language helps us to organize our experiences. And it works pretty well for most of us, but it can also work against us if we pay more attention to words than to what is going on around us. Now, our experiences usually fall into two camps. Over here is the stuff that we want, and then over here is, you guessed it, the stuff that we don't want. Wants over here are easy, and we can't get enough of them. It's the don't wants that bog us down. So noticing opens up learners to all of this, this whole thing. They get some distance and perspective from the sticky stuff, which frees them up to come up with some new moves over here. So it turns out that this noticing stuff is pretty useful and powerful. It's easy to do, it happens naturally, and anyone can do it. You just pay close attention for a moment to whatever is going on either outside of you or inside of you, and then you notice, is it working or not? Now, students who are able to notice their experiences and how they feel are able to relate differently to what shows up inside of them. They learn to, what we call, have their experiences rather than kind of be ruled by them. When they do this, something called choice shows up. I'm just going to write the word choice up here because that's where it happens. We choose and do something up here in the world of the five senses. In other words, the me can then choose a behavior and then notice what happens next. You can choose this behavior, you can choose that behavior, and can be noticing how it feels when it chooses it, and it can also be noticing how it feels when they're trying to move away from the stuff that they don't want. And very often, curiosity shows up to fire up their awareness. Now, in that moment, they can discover that they are the agents of their actions. They choose a behavior and feel empowered in the process of making decisions in any situation they are in. The noticing me is always there to help out. If things don't work out, then they can always choose a different behavior, which of course is being flexible. I'll write that word flexible down here. The matrix is all about psychological flexibility. This whole thing, noticing the whole thing, is the ability to have some psychological flexibility. Now, if kids aren't given the opportunities to make decisions, then guess what? They don't develop the skill, and they don't get to experience themselves as the source of their actions. Kids who are struggling and feel disempowered, and they feel helpless. That might show up inside of them, too, helpless. They are less flexible. They get stuck in these away moves. They go up here and do this stuff that doesn't work. They're back down here feeling this stuff, and they can get stuck. These are not feel-good moments when they get stuck for either the teacher or for the student. So what's needed, then, in these situations is to get a little noticing going. 
So then that's when we pull the matrix art and we start helping the kids notice what's going on. So using the matrix to help learners get in touch with who's noticing is a very powerful way to help them get unstuck and moving in important directions. Every time teachers use it with learners or learners use it on themselves, they are training and practicing this noticing perspective. Empowered moves often show up. They learn to trust and have confidence in themselves in whatever adventures and challenges come their way.